amazing that you got a laugh out of the audience in a panel with three of the top <laughs> economists in the country. What, what stood out to you most about your conversation? Look, I, I think what's remarkable is uh, you have Jay Powell. After two weeks ago, markets are in disarray. There was a real sense that the Fed didn't get it, that there was something really major shifting in the global economy and the U.S. economic outlook, and that they just didn't realize it, didn't understand it. I think this was kind of marking to market. This was him acknowledging that, look, there, there are some real risks out there. There are a lot of concerns, and we hear you. We're ready to adjust if necessary in what we uh, think of as the path for, for the Fed fund rate and any other tools we might need to use. Yeah, I thought his, his message really changed on the markets themselves, on inflation, and, and more specifically on how they're approaching the balance sheet. Felt like a real change in policy. So, so we got a good jobs report and the market rallied 750 points. Do you expect this to be a complete policy shift from the Fed? Look, I'm, I think it's not so much about the policy shift, it's about the balance of risks and the kind of framework that they're using as information comes in. Uh, this is signaling much more openness to, to waiting, uh, you know, perhaps all year, maybe not doing any more interest rate increases this year. It's not a commitment to that. I think there's a distinction there. Uh, I think the, the, the chairman was, was signaling this willingness to, to really listen to what markets are telling him without actually committing to a, any kind of radical change in policy. Uh, if the numbers keep coming in the way uh, that, uh, that bad ISM number did yesterday, maybe there's a change. If they look more like the jobs number this morning, who knows? Neil, uh, stay with us. We're going to also bring in uh, another voice here, Richard Fisher, CNBC contributor and former Dallas Fed, Fed president. Richard, uh, thanks for joining us today. What Thank do you, you make of this, um, this kind of saga of Jay Powell talking to the markets, trying to make himself understood, revising the message, uh, maybe repeating some things that the market didn't hear the first time? Uh, how is it playing to you? Well, you have to remember his background is radically different than Janet Yellen's or Ben Bernanke's. He came up through the credit side, capital market side, started Dylan Reed, ended up at Carlisle. He's not an economist. Uh, and I think he is, and I know this man, I think, very well from the moment he joined us on the FOMC in June of 2012. Uh, unlike what people seem to think right now, he really does understand capital markets. And I didn't see anything new in what he said, nothing. Uh, he made it very clear that the markets are having a different view of the economy than the FOMC has, the committee that he chairs. Uh, he's always said that they will be flexible from the moment he came in. The word patient was new, uh, you know, reflecting Janet Yellen's approach. But that's the only change that I heard. So I heard nothing new whatsoever. And I hope you understand that he really does know how markets work. This was something that was an anathema to his predecessor, particularly Ben Bernanke, who came from a brilliant academic background and was in the right place at the right time dealing with the crisis. But you have to understand, this is a different kind of creature. He has a different perspective. He's much more market sensitive and always has been throughout his career than a Ben Bernanke or even Janet Yellen, who came from an academic background. So. I, this is much ado about nothing as far as I'm concerned. I, well, I Neil, really do Neil, think... You I, I just no, but get I think Neil, Neil makes a here. good point. Go so you, you can't say that... You can't really predict how they're going to move. He, right. They keep saying, and Jay Powell keeps saying, the economy is doing well. He, has some, he pointed to numbers today. And, I, you know, I, I think the market here, as far as I'm concerned, and I'd love to have Neil's views, is so hooked on accommodative monetary policy, it's very hard to withdraw. And we're going through this volatile withdrawal, as you would from anybody who is overly induced with alcohol or opioids, whatever it may be, for too long. And now that the course is changing, it's just going to lead to further volatility and some pain. And I don't see that changing. But Neil, Neil may have a different view. how do you think the view. Fed's thinking about that? Look, I, you know, this is absolutely a, a I think the withdrawal process is, uh, is accurate, but I think we saw some important hints from Chairman Powell today that uh, that they're not just going to rip off the band-aid, they're not just going to go uh, go ahead with this withdrawal no matter what. 
Uh, one hint, uh, he mentioned wage growth in the jobs report that was quite strong, 3.2 percent. But he said specifically that's not an inflation worry for him. That's not something that's making him worry that they need mm -hmm. to raise rates faster. He also mentioned this experience from 2015, 2016 uh, that I think within the Fed is viewed as a success when they held off on rate increases in early 2016 in response to international strains and problems in China. Uh, they view, they believe that they prevented a recession in 2016 by doing that. I think those two mentions are signs that he is willing to be dovish in 2019 if, if circumstances continue to, uh, to, to, to justify it. So I, yeah, I like to was, say, uh, by the way, I don't like, I don't like hawk or dove. He's going to be a wise owl, and that's the way the Fed proceeds. <laughs> so uh, I agree with Neil. It may or may not uh, increase significantly, or many times next year, or maybe not at all. But I think they're going to be guided by, and they always are. And he reemphasizes today by what happens in the real economy and whether or not what happens in trading markets infects the real economy, or they perceive it as doing so. And again, it was made clear today that they haven't seen that so far.